My name is Taylor Tyser. I'm a post -bac student at the University of North Florida, but I'm currently interning at Mayo Clinic in the nanomedicine and extracellular vesicles lab. Science is always interesting. I mean, elementary school, middle school, it was always cool learning about plants and animals and how our body works, but it wasn't until college that it actually got super interesting and I realized that this actually was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I came in to Mayo Clinic from a bacterial research lab, so I knew how to do bacterial research. And on my first day, I learned how to do mammalian research, which is completely different. So that was pretty cool to learn how to work with our own types of cells. I mean, we work with um, Kufr cells, which are from the liver, which is pretty Pretty cool. One of the big aspects of Mayo is that we're trying to help people. That's the whole point of our lab is to help patients save lives, just give them a better life. So one of the cool things is about our lab is that we get samples from patients and we're using it to help patients and keeps that thought in the forefront of our minds that we're doing this to save lives. We're not doing this just to know stuff which really puts things in perspective of what we're actually you know, doing all this research for. So my project is looking at using extracellular vesicles in order to promote liver regeneration in people who have liver damage. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can you know, help these people with damaged livers, but that doesn't require them to be on a transplant wait list. So we're trying to find a way to use their own body's extracellular vesicles in order to heal their liver. So it's not much better than using your body to heal your body. And it makes perfect sense. Extracellular vesicles are basically your cell's text messages from one cell to the next cell. So the cells still need to communicate to each other. So they kind of live off a little piece of themselves with all this information stored in them or on the outside of them and then shoot it over to another cell. They take it in, they get the information, and then your cells know how to respond to whatever the other cell told them. My PI told me that to me I'd be a little crazy to be in research. And during one of my PhD application interviews, I said that to the people who were interviewing me. And once they were done laughing, they agreed. So you have to be a little crazy, you have to be a little quirky, and I'd say the biggest thing you need to be able to do to do research is just roll with the punches because research doesn't always work. You're lucky if 30% of your experiments work. I just want to show that no matter how much you have against you, no matter how hard it is, how many times you get denied, how many applications you put out there, how many labs you're in, that you can get what you want as long as you work hard for it. So we brought high school students into the lab and showed them what it's like to be a researcher, be a scientist, and showed them something that they might not have realized is a potential opportunity and something that they can do with their lives. And it was pretty cool seeing just how excited they got when they got to see their own DNA or when they made nanoparticles and seeing their reactions when they got to see something work. Was pretty awesome. About a month or so I'm going to be going to an elementary school doing the same thing with fifth graders. So I'm going to be showing that even 10, 11 year olds can be shown just how amazing it is to be a scientist so that they're not just thinking science is hard but they're thinking science is cool at a young age. Once, when I'm not in the lab I'm over at UNF as a supplemental instruction teacher for genetics. So it's kind of like a tutor, but I follow one class around and I just specialize in that class instead of a whole subject area. So it helps me get to know my students really well. This is going to be my fourth semester doing it. I've enjoyed every moment of it so far, even though it's frustrating. It's always because I get so invested in these students and I get so just emotionally connected to them because I'm with them through all their tough times, helping them as they're getting ready for exams, I feel their frustration because I went through it. And I just, I try to help them during my sessions. And I like to tell them that you always practice harder than you play. My best memory of it was when I was graduating in the spring of um, 2019. 
2017 and I did SI with genetics and there were quite a few seniors who took the class and they wanted right before graduation ceremony to take a picture with their SI leader. So I got a picture with all my students who I helped graduate. And that was, it was a little bit of a tearjerker moment, but it's just because I cared so much about them and I really, really enjoyed all of it. So I'll be the first person in my family to be going to grad school and I'll be going straight to PhD, so that'll be fun. But not only will I be the first person, I'll be the first woman in my family to be going for a PhD, which is exciting and that's a pretty big step. I mean, you always feel kind of almost at a disadvantage when you're female in science and I just want to show that you can do it. It doesn't matter your gender, your race, ethnicity, none of that matters. It's what's up here that matters. So you have to show that you deserve it, that you work hard for it. Anybody saying that you can't do things just because of your skin color, where you come from, or if you have an X or a Y chromosome, that doesn't matter. What matters is what you learn and what you do with it. Do it. Follow your dreams. I mean, that's a cliche to say follow your dreams, but you can do that nowadays. You can do anything in college. You can learn whatever you want and you can take whatever classes to find what you love. And as soon as you find that, you can work for it and you can do it. And it matters what's inside your head. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your gender. That's not going to say you can't or can't do something. And what better career than something that you wake up excited to do. It's not work if you really, really love it.